I'm gonna show you how to create a logo in mid-journey using certain tips, styles, and phrases in your prompt to create an image for one of the following purposes. One, either to hopefully convert straight to vector for use, or simply something to get started to find inspiration for, or maybe even take to a graphic designer, or to create a basic image to use until you can afford a professional graphic design service. Now I'm gonna start with a few basic logo phrases that you can use. The first is just to put in a logo, which is pretty obvious. A logo for a samurai helmet is the example I've got here. You can also put in an emblem or even a minimalist logo if you wanna cut down some of that detail. And even minimal, you'll get a similar result there also. Moving on, you can also just simply type in vector logo to get something that's a little bit more tailored towards vector or even a logo design. Adding the word design often has a bit of an impact on the look of the image. Even adding an emblem design a minimalist logo design has sort of upped the design value a little bit more or minimal logo design or even a vector logo design again. So you can see that these are a little bit more simpler and flat and vector friendly. And we move on to mixing something like this all together. We get a minimal emblem design for a samurai helmet. We get something like this, which is not perfect, but it kind of brings me to my next point. And that is that you're never gonna get a logo as good as a professional designer using Midjourney, at least or not at this stage. It's not as clean or as crisp, but it's not just about the logo creation. But the professional has knowledge of what works as a logo, and you're also missing things like the full branding, such as colors, fonts, and themes when it comes to creating your logo. So this should really be seen more as a beginner step or something you're using for a small social media profile with the aim of going to a professional designer eventually to get a proper full brand design for your business. But my next tip is to get a little bit more descriptive. So for example, we can say what something is shaped like. I can say it's shaped like the letter A, such as this, which is a minimal logo for a tech company shaped like the letter A. And we move on to something like shaped like a circle. We get some cool results that way, more circular, shaped like a triangle, shaped like a star, or shaped like the letter V. So you can use certain objects or letters to create certain shapes. You can also add things like shaped like a mountain. Like I said, it doesn't have to be simple. It can be an actual object and you can still get some pretty decent results. Now, you also wanna control certain attributes and elements because there are certain things you want and don't want inside of a logo to make it more suitable. For example, flat colors. We wanna steer away from gradients and things like that. So if you're having trouble getting flat colors, add flat colors into your prompt or even vector shapes if you're looking to get shapes that are a little more simple and a little bit more just easier to convert to vector or geometric shapes if you wanna get that geometric look or even smooth blobby shapes if that's the kind of look you're going for also. You can even move on to straight lines and get like a more of an outline style logo as well or you can mix it all together again such as flat colors and geometric shapes or even flat colors and blobby vector shapes. So once again, this is a great way you can convert these to vector pretty easily or trace them pretty easily if you wanna get really precise in Adobe Illustrator or something simple. But you can also try including elements. So here we have featuring a smartphone and a hammer or even something like this, such as featuring a dragon and a computer, which has got a pretty nifty effect and could be great inspiration for a logo you're creating yourself or even just converted straight to vector. Now, I wanna also consider the fact that some things are just gonna be difficult to get rid of. So you can use negative phrases with dash, dash, no. So you can get rid of things like complex shapes, shading, gradients, text, letters, numbers, or you can also, for my next step, add text. So you can see here we have add text. So with a logo design for a samurai helmet, add the text and then in quotation marks, Budo Supermarket, and it's added the words Budo and Supermarket in there. Now you wanna keep your stylized values down for this, and it's not perfect, but it can, again, be a great place to start. And you can see, we have the same here for the exact same prompt, and we've got Budo Supermarket, so we've got a pretty cool sort of little layout and logo there. And again, another variation of the same prompt, so you can see how effective it can be, especially since we've been able to add text in using version six. Now you're gonna need to potentially re-roll a lot of times when you're coming up with this, or use very region, but you're probably gonna get mixed results if you're gonna use very region to try and add text into certain areas. But your best bet is to bring your image into another program. If you're just wanting to use the image for something simple, bring it into Canva, so you can pop some text over the top. Canva is free and a great place for beginners to start. If you have professional design software and you can convert it to vector, something like Illustrator is a great idea or even Photoshop, something basic. But 
You can even supply it to a professional designer and just simply get them to recreate it as a vector and add the text in as well. But you don't have to stop at just what Midjourney gives you. You can also control the color of your logo. So here we've got a simple black and white logo. You can see how effective it has been at nailing down that color. You can move on to a warm color palette, a cool color palette, or even just neon colors and get like a nice gradient. Again, you can't convert it to vector, but you probably could introduce it in a professional program later. And purple and green. Choosing one color and another is a great way to take full control over the results you get and produce something a little bit more precise. But you can also describe the type of logo, either visually, as in the, the format of the logo, or the platform it's intended for. Now, some of these aren't 100% accurate. They actually don't marry up with the actual description, but they do steer the logo in a certain direction. So I'll show you what I mean. So a brand mark, this looks pretty close in the sense that a brand mark is like an image or an icon that you wanna to add to your logo. It's something that really defines a business, kind of like the Nike tick or a word mark. Now this is actually added imagery as well, whereas a word mark is sort of more just the word itself. But by adding a word mark and the quotation marks, bear chef, I was able to get this image, which I think is pretty nifty. And although it's not a word mark, it is a phrase you can use once you understand that it can help sort of get a certain style of image. And mascot, if you wanna actually create a mascot logo, simply having a mascot logo for a boxing gym like I have here is a great way to create a mascot. Also, if you want something that's not necessarily clean cut, like you just want a cool image that looks like a logo, 3D gamer logo, can get you some pretty interesting results too. But you can also, if you're just creating for social media, things like social media icon can do a great job or a YouTuber logo. Now this is a pretty cool image to use just for an ID on your YouTube channel. A streamer logo to create something that's a little bit more graphical and in line with say the esports industry. And again, esports logo itself. You can create esports style logos really effectively in mid journey and get some good results. But a vintage style logo, you can get something pretty cool and vintage looking uh, by using that, ter that term in your prompt. But you can also move on and try designer names as well. Famous designers such as Carolyn Davidson, and it will sort of reference some of their work to try and capture a style. Even Paul Rand, so this is for a dog wash business and I've got here designed by Paul Rand. Alan Fletcher, you can see that this logo could work pretty well or Linden Leader, and this logo I also think would work pretty well with a bit of text underneath it. But I've also tried people who aren't necessarily logo designers to influence this prompt. As you can see, it's a minimalist logo for a dog wash business. This one is designed by HR Geiger, and it's added a little bit of a HR Geiger feel where instead of having sort of like tentacles and that, it's kind of added like a little bit of a flamey type effect to the dog. Uh, so it doesn't really look like a HR Geiger image, but it's added a little bit of his personality, I would say probably into 15% of the logo, which is something you can play with as well. Now you can combine a lot of those phrases and add them into as much of your prompt as you want to. But one thing I also recommend trying out is heading to the Mid Journey website. Just go up the top here to search, type in logo, and you can see a bunch of logos people have already been able to create such as we've got this one here, a lined logo using digital link. So that is actually a pretty cool effect and something that you could use as a logo. So you could take that phrase, alter it a little bit to suit what you're after. Also something like this, a little bit different. We've got that wreath around the outside and you could probably remove that text. Now again, once again, altering that prompt could give you something very cool and changing the color. So this is a great guideline for seeing what's worked for other people. Whilst also offering a little inspiration for things that are possibly a little bit different, such as this one here. So you're able to scroll through and really find some cool little pieces of inspiration. You might not even want to use AI. You might just simply want to scroll through here looking for inspiration for you to go and design a logo by hand. Now, when you're done, if you're looking for somewhere to sort of get an auto vector of this image, you can check out Vectorizer AI, which is a paid platform. I'll share a free one in a minute, but I can grab my dragon image, drop it in. I'm gonna come up top here and compare the two and zoom in. You can see how clean that trace is. So you can actually check this out before paying any money to vectorizer.ai to see if you're happy with the result. Otherwise, there's Adobe Express. I'm gonna to head to Google, type in Adobe Express PNG to vector, hit search, and I've got a converter here. I can click on, click upload photo, and drag this image in, and it's vectorized it for us, and we can download it here. 
There's actually a bunch of programs out there you can use to auto vectorize stuff and I'm going to pop a video on the screen right now. I recommend checking those out if you want to see some more vector converter options. Otherwise, again, I ultimately recommend going to a professional designer if you're serious about your business and getting a full brand done up, but this can help you get started and get the basics going. So if you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Take care.